I saw that photo of the four of you linked arm in arm yesterday. There was a huge article in the Washington Post about it. Yeah. Just the imagery of seeing that picture, the magnitude, the power of what that meant. What did it mean to you? You know, for all of us, I mean, we've had our fair share of issues that we've had to deal with just throughout the sport. And we came together on Thursday, Friday, so our training camp day, and we wanted to make a statement that, you know, would be respectful based on the place that we were at, but also at the same time, make sure that it was visible, mm -hmm. make sure that young kids at home could see us taking more of like an activism mindset toward this whole game. Mm -hmm. What um, does it mean for you now to have that voice? I mean, like, it's awesome. I mean, like, we so we had a conversation with the league, and we just wanted to make sure that our voice was heard. And I mean, it, and it's been nice. You know, we've had some tough conversations, but the league has given us this platform. And every other sport, we feel like guys have taken advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And we just didn't want to miss our opportunity. And you know, it's something that we'll be able to tell our kids. Hey, I mean, like, we fought for equality when we were twenty to twenty five, so that you guys don't have to. What kind of um you don't have to get into anything. Is there one thing that stuck out in your mind of a point of injustice on your part, what you spoke out about, what you really yeah. just drove home, those uncomfortable conversations? Yeah, I mean, the uncomfortable conversation I always feel like is, you know, everyone needs to hear both sides of the argument. And I feel like a lot of time, one side kind of tries to muddy out the, the, the other and it goes both ways. And I felt like I needed to articulate just the experience of the black male in this country in general and how our sport hasn't done a great job of, in, of inclusion and also hasn't done a great job of addressing issues, like whether it be some, some sort of like racial action. Like all throughout growing up, I, I grew up swimming, playing hockey, playing sports where I was the only one of us. And there were a lot of times where someone called me the N-word or said something that was inappropriate and hurtful. And I brought it up to the powers that be and nothing ever happened. And I had some similar experiences coaching. And it's easy for us to say at this level, you know, yeah, you know, like we, we've dealt with all this and, you know, like just deal with it. But at the same time, I think that we're at a point now where we're kind of over that and we want to see some real change. There was one point that Mark Ellis said that really struck a chord with me personally, saying it's not, you know, I don't have to do this, but I feel it's my obligation, not only just the representation of what a black man in the sport of lacrosse is and the representation it is in Major League Lacrosse, but not only that, to speak to those young kids that are picking up a lacrosse stick, the symbolism of what you stand for nationally. Uh, what would you say to a, you know, a young kid, the younger generations that are tentative, afraid uh, of, you know, going out on a limb, being, you know, the only African-American in a town full of white people? I, you know, I, those those experiences, like, what, what, do you, what lessons and wisdom do you want to impart on younger kids? I mean, I would say strength. And honestly, if I could go back and redo it all over again, I feel like I let too many micro aggressions slide. I feel like I was almost part of the problem. And that was kind of our, like my conversation with Mark, Chris and Chad. I feel like that was something that really hit home for me because during this whole movement, I was like, well, like, I feel like there hasn't been a lot of things that have directly affected me. And then when I went back and I thought about it, I was like, wait, like I can name like a handful of stuff every single year that was crossed like the line and it would have been a problem anywhere else. But it's something that I've just learned to deal with. So kind of going off of Mark's point, like Mark has had a similar experience. I mean, Mark grew up in Garden City. Mark played at two different colleges. So he has like a wide range of different experiences. And I feel like, just like I was saying earlier, I want to be able to look at my kid and say, you know what, I, I moved and tried to make a real change in, in our sports. So some of those things that I was just talking to you about, about being called certain names, they don't have to deal with that because at the end of the day, kids who are just starting to play the game, they aren't, they don't want to play a game that doesn't accept them and, and won't listen to some of the issues that they're facing on a, on a daily basis. For example, like if a kid gets called the N-word and nothing happens, why do I want to play the sport where I can go play basketball or football and not have to deal with it? There's certain narrative nationally about 
hey, it's not just enough for your company to go out and say, we're doing social justice and we're doing change. Hey, why don't I see your board? How many African-Americans do you employ? How many African-American foundations do you support? What kind of change do you want to see within Major League Lacrosse? Do you want to perhaps start a board of social justice matters? Do you want to be more outspoken on this? Like how aggressive do you want to attack this initiative? I mean, I, like I want to attack it head forward and just like all you said, I want to attack it from all angles. And and I mean, we part of what our discussion with the commissioner and, and the league is we kind of put his foot to, to the fire. We felt like the league wasn't doing enough, but at the same time, like that was an open conversation. And even though it was a difficult conversation for all parties, he sat there like a man and listened to all of us talk and some of what we want to see happen. And as and I feel like it's up to us and and the league in general to follow through on it. So one thing that was brought up is starting camps and making sure that our voice is out there and making sure that we're trying to educate people and on our struggles as well as bring more African Americans into the overall game. Is there anything else that you want to get off your chest saying to the world? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I would just like the only thing that I would say is like, if there's any issues, make sure that you bring it up. And it's all about just education. I mean, people can't change if people don't know it's a problem. And even though you might not agree with what the, the other side says, you should sit and listen and try to understand it from their point of view and try to educate that person. And that's kind of the stance that I've taken on a more personal level. And, you know, I can't speak for anyone else, but for me, that was my stance towards like the league. Like I felt like, like they like they weren't intentionally doing anything to harm us or to, you know, be, be disrespectful, but we just wanted to make sure that they understood where, where we as players were coming from and, you know, like they heard it. And, but they would have never known unless we sat down and actually said something about it. So that would be my kind of piece of advice to anyone who's on the outside, you know, like looking in, make sure that if you think that there's an issue, you bring it up and be, be, be part of a league like this where like people are willing to sit down and listen. Thank you very much.